Nicole's running the behind the scenes. Okay. So funny, there's like, is there a way to like zoom in? I'm not sure. Okay, and we are gonna get started. Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Raina's Nail Art Pursuit. I'm Raina, the social media marketer and customer service representative here at Silliview. I'm so happy you could all join us for another great episode. Today we are joined by Fiote educator Devin, also known as Dev the Nail Junkie on Instagram. And today we are going to be doing some really interesting nails. They are going to be comprised of magnetic gels, um, also known as cat eye gels or angel eyes or so many other things. But I'm going to let Devin take it away and tell us a little bit about these magnetic gels and what makes them so cool. So basically, magnetic gels have special magnetic pigments inside them. And when you use a magnet, it magnetizes the pigments and makes it refract the light. So for example, I'm going to show you here. When I move it in different directions, it looks like cat eye, tiger's eye, whatever you want to call it. And this is what happens when the magnet um, magnetizes the pigments. It changes the direction of the pigments and then it creates this gorgeous, gorgeous shine. As you can see, when I move it around on the nail tip, you can see like a really pretty, pretty shine. I love it. So, <laughs> Have you ever tried magnetic gels, Rena? Is this your first time? I've tried a couple of times on my own, but I can't seem to get the magnet to create the shine I'm looking for. Sometimes I'll put the magnet next to it and I'll somehow lose all the sparkles. <laughs> Sometimes oh, part I of it know. to have the sparkle and some of it to not have the sparkle. So it's a little all over the place. So I'm excited to learn how to properly use the magnet. <laughs> I completely understand. I've had the same issues, especially when I first started playing with these. Um, it's not hard, but it just takes a little bit of practice and you have to understand your magnet well. So I completely know what you mean. Okay, let's get started. Um, why don't you show me the two magnets that you have, Rena? Yes, so I have one large magnet and I have one dual magnet. Oh, and they're sticking together. <laughs> As that always happens to me. <laughs> yeah. I'll move this one. So what okay. is the difference between the two? Like, are there specific scenarios you would use one for and not the other, or is it just preference? Yes. So thank you for bringing that up. Actually, it, there are, there is a difference. So, um, this magnet here, let me show you. This magnet um, creates different types of effects. So for example, you can create like a swirl or a half moon. So for example, here I did like a half moon thing um, and it creates like a, a circular effect as you can see. And that's one of the effects that you can do with this small circular magnet. You can even create like an S shape and make the magnetic pigments create like a really cute like swirl. Um, other ways you can use it is you can create like a diagonal effect like this. Oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> it's like very galaxy. Yes, exactly. it's a very galaxy look. So there are lots of different effects that you can use, like the different styles of magnets. But one of the huge defining features between this magnet and the other magnet that you have, the large one, is that the large one is very, very strong. So if you're trying to get like a super strong, sharp effect, that magnet would be the one to use. This magnet is a little bit weaker, but it's good and useful depending on what type of technique you want or what kind of look you, you're trying to get. So it really just depends. Um, both magnets are very useful. Both magnets have their place. 
And today I am going to be showing you how to use this magnet and I will have you demonstrate how to use the other magnet. Um, so some things that I want to share with everyone before we get started into the demonstration. Um, when you're working with magnets, you might wanna move a bit slower. So for example, I'm not just gonna like go like this or like go like this because uh, what you'll start to notice is that the pigments move kind of quickly. And sometimes it's better to have it move a little bit slower so you can like find the shine in the beginning, at least until you get more comfortable and know exactly like, okay, I know how to use my magnet. I know what to look for. Um, I recommend moving a little bit slower so that way you don't get like maybe a look that you didn't want or something. Um, so yeah. And then also the cool thing is that you can play around with the effect as many times as you want before you cure it. So you don't have to worry, but let's jump into the demonstration. Okay. Are you ready, Reina? Do you have your nail tips? I'm ready. Okay. So let's first talk about the basics of um, like magnetic gels and the angel eye collections. So you're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna pretend that our base is already done. We already applied our base gel. We already finished prepping the nails. And then you're just gonna go ahead and apply one coat of magnetic gel to the nail. And do I wanna apply this thick, thin? Um, for this, regular? I think you can apply it a little bit on the thicker side. Okay. I decided to give you guys a really large nail tip today. So I did the same. <laughs> I also did like a, a dark color because I was like, oh, maybe it'll be easier for everyone to see the effect. So you're going to notice that after you apply, um, it has a really pretty sheen in it already, like a very nice sparkle. And if you wanted, you could just leave it like this. Um, but I will show you what else you can do with it. So now that you applied one coat evenly, go ahead and cure it for 30 okay. seconds. So generally when you're working with these types of magnetic gels and things, you don't need to magnetize the bottom layer. So this first layer that we're doing, you don't need to magnetize it. It's not necessary. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. Okay, so it's kind of like almost a base layer for the other magnetic glitters. Yes, correct. Okay. <laughs> um, and then after that cures, I'm going to have you set this aside. Okay. The one and I just said. Okay, so we're going to do the next one. Yes, we are going to do the next one. Because I want to show you what happens if you play around and um, improperly magnetize it, which I have done many times. And then, like, like you said, you too. ruin all the sparkle. I yep. completely understand. It happens. It really does. So I figured it'd be a perfect time to show everyone what happens when we, when we accidentally get rid of all the sparkles. Yeah, the first time I did that, I was like, oh my gosh, where did they all go? <laughs> I know. It's so sad when it happens. You're like, dang it. <laughs> so I'm curing this one now too for 30 seconds. No, we're not going to no. cure it. Actually, okay. we're going to grab our magnet and okay. I will leave it up to you which magnet you want to grab. So if you want to use your large one, you can. If not, you can go ahead and use the... Um, the smaller one and then I meanwhile I will be using the smaller one okay I'll use the large one just so we can kind of get the best of both worlds okay. or in this case the worst because we're going to do it badly <laughs> yes so this is what happens when we <laughs> improperly magnetize it now I mean I guess it's not that it's like a bad thing but it might not be the look that you're going for. 
So I want to make sure that it's nice and clear. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this, but. Oh, yeah. I did that in one swipe. <laughs> yep. It all go away. Yep. So that like, means uh, we are using no. the wrong side of the magnet if it all goes away. <laughs> so um, it's good to take note of that because that means this is the side that we're not going to want to use. Again, if that's the look you're going for, if you want like a sheer look with very few sparkles, that's completely fine. However, most people are trying to chase that like gorgeous effect. And this is not the look that we necessarily want. Definitely not. <laughs> um, so I, we can go ahead and cure this. So that way we can have it as like a comparison later. Okay. Perfect. And then now we are going to go back to our other nail tip, the first nail tip that we swatched. And we're gonna show you how to do it properly and how to find the right side. So I'm not sure if you are able to take note of which side of the magnet that caused that, <laughs> caused all the sparkles to go away. <laughs> but yeah, I have it. If you do, I recommend using a Sharpie or you can use nail polish and dot that side or put an X on it or whatever you need to do to let you know that that's not the side that you might actually want to use. I already have another magnet that has its little marking on it so I know. But yeah, you just have to dot it with like a polish or anything just so that way you know like, okay, this is not what I want to use. Um, and it really helps. I don't know who mentioned this trick, but someone told me about this. I was like watching it on a YouTube and I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? It's such a simple solution. Um, so next we're gonna wanna go ahead and apply a second coat to that swatch that we previously did. The very first swatch. Gotcha. Okay, so did you mark which side was the negative side of the magnet? Yes. Okay, now using the positive side of the magnet, the, the side that you didn't use, you're gonna go ahead and just slowly take your magnet to it and you're gonna have to kind of play around and find the sparkles. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see it. It's actually working when you go like super slow. Yeah. Sometimes you have to move a little slower. Sometimes you have to move the magnet a little further or closer. It just depends what kind of look you're trying to make. So I slid my magnet out so that way I could get like, or have an easier time creating the effect that I want. So do you kind of and, just go around all the sides? Yes. So if you're trying to create um, like the full magnetized nail look, then you're going to need to go around the entire nail and kind of play with it. And you're going to notice too that like sometimes you'll have to pull the magnet up like this or down like this to try to get the whole nail to like magnetize. So it just takes a little bit of practice and playing with it. You have to just kind of experiment to see which side works for you best or um, what, what will create the desired look. So I definitely recommend that if you are new to magnetic gels, um, spend some time playing around on your swatches and just kind of get used to working with it before you actually do it like on a client and then you're like, oh no, why isn't it working the way that I wanted it to? Um, it's mainly because most people need to just kind of get more comfortable with their magnets.
So once you get kind of a desired effect, you can go ahead and cure it. Oh yeah, I totally see it. I saw it move just now when you did that. Isn't that cool? I love watching it just go. Yeah. Back and forth. (laughs) I know, it's so much fun. So once that's done, go ahead and cure for another 30 seconds. So do you have any nails you've done that have been like your favorite using these types of gels? I think I remember a while back you did like these mountain nails and I think you used magnetic gels for it. I did. So for the mountain nails that I did, it was using the space opera, leaf gel space opera magnetic gel collection. And I created some really cool mountain nails. I think it also has like reflective glitter in it too. So I really liked that set. Actually, you're right. That was one of my favorite sets. (laughs) One of my other favorite sets that I created using magnetic gels was creating like a stone effect because you can create some really pretty stone like looks with these special finishes. I can see that. Yeah, definitely like an emerald or a ruby. Yeah. So... Um, this is what it looks like though, when the whole nail is magnetized. Oh yeah. I can totally see it on yours too. Good job. See, you're Thank figuring you. it out. Oh yeah. I feel so much better about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can make a moon, but I can make it sparkly. <laughs> you will, you'll be able to make a moon. So now that we have some tips to compare, Let's take the two tips that we swatched and put them next to each other so people can see the difference of like what happens when it's just sheer and you accidentally eat up all the sparkles versus what happens when everything goes right. It's crazy how different it is. It really is, isn't it? Like I can see the blue uhu tacky underneath on the left tip versus the right tip. Like I can barely see it it's so crazy how it went from like a sparkly sheer tint to like this gorgeous magnetic finish so that is what it looks like when we magnetize properly versus if we don't have a chance to magnetize it um, (laughs) the right way so the last effect that I want to show you for this beginning session is what it looks like when you just apply it regularly. So no magnetization whatsoever. I'm sure it's still gorgeous, honestly, because there's such pretty colors. It really like is. Sparkles, even without the magnet. It's so pretty. just going to go ahead and cure for another 30 seconds. Okay, now that my tip is done curing, I'm going to just go ahead and apply a second coat. Just so that way we can compare everything. Even without the magnet, it's still so sparkly. It's amazing. It is. And that's part of the reason why I wanted us to show everyone of like, look at all the different ways you can use this. I mean, like these are just very, very basic ways where if you're not 
um, very skilled with a magnet and you're not used to like doing all the different types of techniques, this is already three options that people can use the gel as is. Definitely. Even I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mine's all done. Still mine's super cute, too. honestly. Even without the magnet, it still has that movement when you like move it around. It still kind okay. of bounces. So now let's take a look up close. And why don't you go ahead and show everyone the three tips that you created? Okay, just putting them on my little stand. So as you can see on the far right, I have the tip that was not magnetized correctly and it gave us basically a sparkly sheer tint which looks really cute. Um, the one in the middle is what it looks like when we didn't magnetize it. So this is no magnetization whatsoever. This is just two coats of applying it straight from the bottle. And then this last one right here on the far left is the magnetized version. So you can kind of see it too when I'm moving it around, like it has more of a silvery cast than the tip in the center. Yeah, and it like gives it a lot of dimension. Too. It does. It really, really does. So again, all three looks are pretty. So it really just depends what kind of effect you want. But typically, most people are interested in creating an effect more like this. Definitely. So... That is the beginner's guide to using magnetic gels. Now we're going to go to intermediate level and we're going to start focusing on creating <laughs> some designs. And I have faith in you. I know you can do this. Well, I'm glad you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to set up my tips real quick. Maybe I'll try a different color for this next one so we can get a yeah. little variety. So I'm going to be using Fiote's Satin Prism SA05. Ooh, should I give it a shot and try a different color too? Yeah, I think I'm gonna. It's, fun. it's like this gorgeous like, blue. Oh, I love so it. So pretty. Um, I think I'm going to use the. FG 53, which is a really pretty like cranberry color. So let's start with okay. some of the easier designs. So you're gonna go ahead and apply all over one nail, just like how we were doing before. Go ahead, apply a generous amount. And then once you've applied enough, you can go ahead and cure it for 30 seconds. I think I like the whole magnetic gel with like really dark colors the most. Because I feel like the contrast between the little pigments of the glitters and the magnets just stand out so much from like a darker color. I don't know. That's just me. I completely understand exactly what you mean. That's part of the reason why today I ended up choosing a dark color for um, our live, just because I wanted everyone to be able to see the high contrast on the video. Definitely. Like you really so, see a big standout difference. I applied my first layer and now I'm going to go ahead and apply my second layer. Now that it's all cured. So I have to wear a glove on my hand right now because this morning <laughs> oh while I was lifting, I was doing a deadlift and my nail broke and <gasps> it was so painful. <laughs> oh, it was goodness. like, I know I was so crushed. I was like, oh my God. But I mean, it's my fault. I haven't had a chance to um, like 
fix my set and do a new set. So it was about time. I was really asking for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure enough, of course, it happened. And I was like, great, right before my live. That's what happens. Hey, thank God for gloves. <laughs> I know. I was like, okay, we're just going to put a glove on it. Like we're going to do the Michael Jackson and just one glove. <laughs> Yeah, I see tons of nail techs on TikTok and everything. They're all wearing gloves because probably most of them haven't done their nails in a long time. Because there's this is the truth. Yeah. This is the truth. It like it's so funny how like nail techs will like create all this beautiful work, but their own nails are just like suffering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So now that we applied our second coat, um, before you cure it, go ahead and grab this magnet and we're going to use the circle side. Oh, okay. So, yep. Now you can go ahead and just move it close to the nail tip. So I'm going in the center, side center. So like this. Yes. Yes. I can see it moving. Ooh, correct. You got it. Oh my goodness. So that's like it's, that little moon thing you were talking about. Yes. That is like the little moon that I was talking about. Oh, so you can literally just like shape it in the way you want. Yes. Cool. So this is one of the first looks. If you want to create a moon effect, it's very easy. And then the slow, I don't know if it, this happens for you too, but when I slowly pull away, it actually like magnetizes all of this stuff over here. And then it almost creates an even more intense like C shape. I see that. Okay. Yes, it looks so good. I see it on yours too. Perfect, perfect. You got it. Okay. Oh, that's crazy. Let's <laughs> go ahead and cure. I'm just so impressed. Because once you know how you're supposed to be doing it, it just instantly clicks. Yes, and it makes it so easy. You know, once you just kind of play around and experiment with your magnet, you'll realize there's so many different techniques and things that you can try with it. I love it. I'm going to be doing this all week. I'm going to have a million. I know. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But now I get why this is like one of our best sellers. At mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. <laughs> and it's just so fun to do too. It's like really enjoyable to create it. So next we are going to do a similar style. But instead, we're going to kind of create an S shape. So go ahead and apply your first coat to your nail tip. So, Raina, you've been doing a lot of these different little nail art pursuit videos, trying a lot of different techniques. Have you found um, a technique that you like or something that you thought was really cool out of all the lives that you've been doing? That's a good question. Um, without being partial, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with the toppings. Um, just oh, kind of like yeah about the placement of using clear gel gels that are sometimes infused with other things. I mean, I've also really enjoyed using the molds. That was really fun. Mm. And then honestly, I think this is probably going to be my favorite because I love these. I love magnetic gels. They're so I pretty. Recently, I also recently found my favorite brush. Ooh, what's your favorite <laughs> brush? Share all the details. I was having, I was having a really tough time um, keeping my hands steady with the uh, long liner brush for mm. like, artwork. So I wanted to find something that would help me kind of practice a bit. And I started using the um, extra small liner from Leaf Gel. Yes. It is a game changer. It is a game changer. It was so easy. It's like painting. And it's so, so fun awesome. to use it. 
And then I started using it more. And I noticed when I went back to the long liner, I got better at it. Yay. So any beginners out there, if you're having trouble, get yourself an extra small liner brush. They're amazing. That and makes sense. They'll like train you almost. Yeah. Because if you start off really thin, it's it's like so shaky, you know, but if you have like a little more of a thickness and it's like short, so it's like just little small strokes. It's great. It's true. Also, using a brush with shorter bristles ensures that you actually have mm. more control. So a Definitely. lot of times um, for people who do like anime style nail art or character art, they usually use a short brush like the excess, um, the extra small from leaf gel, because it allows you to really paint all those tiny details very easily versus the long liner brush is great, but it's only good if you're like trying to create um, peacock or like long lines, stripes, those types of things work like beautifully. My, like these white lines I have on my nails, like yes. you would use the long liner for that for sure. You could, you definitely could. But then okay, you could now, also use the extra small to just fill it in with the color here. It's so true. It's like painting. <laughs> it really, really is. Um, okay, now that we've applied our second coat and we haven't oh. cured it yet. I didn't do that yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll, give you I'll give you a second. I got to stop thinking about that brush. And <laughs> no, I don't blame you. <laughs> like, there's so many fun nail goodies. And I feel like once you find, like, your tool, it's just so fun. You just want to try everything. Okay, I'm ready. All set. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm using the dual magnet again. Yes, you are. And you're going to use the circular side again. Okay. And now you're going to go ahead and on the bottom right corner of your nail tip, you're going to just create that circle shape that we were talking about earlier. So I, you see how I've created a little, a little spot down here. Okay. Yep. And then, then you're going to flip the nail tip and you're going to do the bottom right corner. Now that I flipped it up. <laughs> so it's like diagonals. Yes. And you're going to go ahead and create that same effect. Ooh, that's really cute. So now it creates like a wave. Oh, whoops. A nice wave effect. And you can go ahead if you're like me and you just want to like fix it a little bit more. But this would also be really cool for like a galaxy because it's like a Milky Way kind of thing. Oh, I love that. And now you then you try to like, to... do you try to bring out the rest of it more so it stands out from where you kind of created these little pockets? It's up to you. If you want to make it so that the line is harsher, you can. Or if not, you can create like a more softer effect. So it really just depends like what type of effect you're going for. But it's pretty cool because I feel like I can clearly see like the the swirl that we made. Definitely. I'm gonna go ahead and cure that for 30 seconds. Okay. I can't wait to find out what your favorite technique is going to be out of all of these um, now that I'm showing you like all the different ways to magnetize it yeah it's definitely not just going to be the regular you know make them shine anymore because that's all I was trying <laughs> to do before but now I'm like wait we can make some art <laughs> you can make art on it I've seen people um even create like uh magnetize well I'll show you after but it's like you create one magnetized layer and then you cure it and then you put another magnetized layer on top in a specific area so that Ooh. way it creates like another type of design that is so, i love that let's go ahead and work on the next nail tip and i'm gonna use my red again
I really, really want to try the Angel Eyes Light Angel Collection. Oh my goodness, everyone's obsessed with it. So obsessed. Those stinkers ended up buying it before I could even get my hands on it. <laughs> I like yeah. tried to, um, I was about to order one. And then by the time I was ready to order, it was like, oh, sold out again. And I was like, dang it. Yeah. <laughs> I've somehow Luckily managed now, With our hmm? new website that we just launched, you'll be able to see when something like the Angel Eyes, for instance, is low in stock. So you could be like, okay, no, I got to buy this right now. <laughs> Where they're all good. good. I definitely need that little push, <laughs> push reminder to be like, hey, come get it now before it's gone. Yeah, the they sell out so pretty instantly. I, I actually noticed. I have one of the colors with me here. So maybe what? for my now. Yeah, I have FG67 from the Ooh, new Ooh, I feel like that was one of the colors I was thinking about getting too. Yeah. So after this one, I'll try it out. Show it to you. Very, very exciting. Okay, okay so am so, I curing uh, this one or are we going to magnetize it first? No, we're curing it first. Thanks first. for reminding me. I was like, wait, what are we doing? Because <laughs> it's the first I, like, layer. For like a second, I was like, wait, which layer is this? <laughs> layer one. Yeah, you're right. It's layer one. I just checked. You're right. Especially because we've already done like, this is like the sixth one. <laughs> that we've done so true <laughs> the brain See, this is why this up. is why I made all these swatch tips because I knew that, that. was so smart <laughs> okay. you're you came prepared today I try I would hope by what episode is this five six I would know <laughs> Okay, okay, so coat number now two. that mine is cured, let's do the second coat. So for this, you can create the next design with your big magnet. Oh, okay. I'm going to show people <laughs> what it looks like when we use a small magnet, but I want you to use your big magnet for this one. Okay. So once you apply your second coat, you're going to go ahead and turn your magnet to the side. So this may require you to figure out which side of your magnet works better for you, but you want to have it turned to the side like this. And then you're going to go ahead and, oh, oh. Oops, <laughs> I just <laughs> went ahead and demagnetized everything. So let's see, oh, of course, things like this always happen when you're on camera, but Thanks actually I'm what I was doing. <laughs> I'm happy that this happened because I want to show everyone if this happens to you and everything just like disappears, as long as it's not cured, there's still time to fix it. You actually can just use the brush and go ahead and just repaint it. And it basically resets all of the pigments. Now, if you wanted to, the other way you could do it is that you go ahead and manually like magnetize the pigments and then try to create your design. But I think it's just easier to just like repaint yeah. it. So that way you don't have to worry about any of that. Okay, let me try this again, but this time I'm gonna pull my magnet out. Wish me luck, Rena. Ooh, there okay. we go. So we're making like a line. Looks yes. Like. All right, wish me luck now. <laughs> So what I've noticed works a little easier is um, holding the magnet like this on the side and then just kind of like oh. going at a diagonal like that. Yeah, Slowly, I do though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes. Like immediately. All gone. All right. Let's add another coat. <laughs> I 
I feel like it'll just give it even more pigment though. All these extra layers <laughs> that I've added. Okay, let's try this again. So when you're going in with the magnet, make sure that it's already at a diagonal. So right now it's straight like this, but it needs to be like this. Since we are going to go like this. So the nail tip should be straight, but then your magnet should be angled. And I realized that for some reason, even though I didn't do this, like my phone just kind of Oh, it flipped. It flipped, it. but I didn't even move my phone. Strange enough, it just kind of flipped on its own. Okay, give me one second, everyone. I'm going to try and carefully flip this. In the meantime, watch me ruin this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I oh, gave it okay. To okay, okay. I got a line, I think. All right, I'm going to go diagonal with this. All right, it's not a perfect diagonal but it's a line i'm claiming that as a line okay there we go i think i'm at diagonal yay so strange here we go now let me try again, because I think all my pigment shifted. I think that is the best line I'm gonna make. <laughs> it's, a, it's a straight line, with a little bit of a curve. And I have a little bit of a softer line. You can see the diagonal here. Oh, I love yours. So, so again, if it doesn't work out, we're just, we can restart it. I'm going to restart mine. I'm going to restart I, mine. <laughs> yeah. I completely understand. Sometimes it's like that. Just easier. Just another layer. Yep. And the thing is, we're, you know, it's not like it's getting more bulky or anything like that because we didn't uh, cure it. So true. It's so just basically settling in together. Yeah. It's basically just re, um, reapplying it, I guess, or like moving the pigments back around so that way they can set. So again, hold the nail tip straight, but the magnet should be at an angle. So instead of it going okay. like this, I'm turned this like way, that. other way with your magnet. So go closer to the tip of the nail. Yep. Bring your magnet up higher up here. So you're going to kind of go to the corner of the screen a little bit more. Yep. And then now we're going to go at more of an angle. Yes. Yes. And then slowly come in at a diagonal. I did it again. <laughs> it is a very strong magnet. That magnet takes... Number five. Maybe try that. with your um, other Do magnet. I yeah, I think that's for the best. It might be a little bit easier. Yeah, sometimes the um, the big magnet is amazing because you can do all kinds of cool things, but it does take a little bit of finessing yeah. because it is so much stronger than um, other magnets. Okay, so you said a diagonal like this up here? Yep. Way? So whatever way that causes your magnet to come at a diagonal so that way the, the magnetization is at a diagonal. Oh, I see. So you, it. yeah, you see it happening. There it huh? is. Da -da -da. And then I guess I come from the other direction too to kind of eat. Yes. It. Correct. And there we go. I, I got it. What you did it. I know. And meanwhile, while you did it, I played around too much and I undid it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try one more time because I'm gonna leave my way on too much. Mess it up again. <laughs> yep, that go ahead and cure. Okay, I gotta redo mine since I made too much. Um, <laughs> oh, 
That is so cool. I love watching videos of them just like making that happen. It's so pretty. It really is. I feel like this is a trend that is never going to go out of style, you know? Like, I feel like it's a very popular nail trend you see on social media a lot, but I feel like it's been around for quite a while and it's probably going to still be around for a long time. It has definitely been around for a long time. Like, from what I uh, can remember of when this started becoming popular, it's been like, you know, well over five years now oh, wow. um, that the magnetic gels have been really in uh because zillip you started carrying them in 2020 and it's already 2022 but oh my God. i think even before that i remember seeing them like a couple of years before but the technology wasn't as good as it is now and mm. zillip um magnetic gels are a lot higher quality than some of the other ones that we had previously um you know when they first started doing cat eye gels the colors weren't as pretty they didn't magnetize as strongly and now we have you know so many different effects so many different styles now we have like rainbows in the newest collection with light angel where you can really make a little yes. crazy even like i think with um light angel it has holographic pigments in it too so you really get like double shine yeah well we're gonna oh. see my next one so for the next design, this one is going to be a straight line, just like how you did. Okay, and this is FG67 from the Light Angel collection. Ooh, yay. I really, really, really like that color. It's just it's such so a multi-dimensional color. It's crazy. Like I look at it and I'm like, okay, it has some like orange, but then it also, when you look at it very closely, I wish you could see with this camera, mm. it's like a little rainbow inside of the color. Like I can see every color of the rainbow inside of these little pockets of glitters. It's crazy. I'm so jealous. You get to play with you it. Gotta it's go. so pretty. <laughs> I will it. eventually I'll get it. Yeah. Eventually I'm going to get it. Once the restock comes in, I'm going to have to pick that up. <laughs> I'll text you the day it comes back. <laughs> I'll be like, yay. Get it. <laughs> We're good. Oh, I'm so messy with these tips. Always got a little, a little bit. Okay. I'm the cure. The only thing I would say with these is that sometimes when I'm messing around with them, I like to put like uh, one coat of maybe like white underneath. I don't oh. know if you've done that um, because then it's like way less sheer. And then once you have the second coat, you can't even see the white anymore. And it's like, boom. It's true. I, I haven't tried it um, with a white over it. I think usually if I like wanted to intensify, I would just maybe put like a third coat. Um, but again, it's just a personal preference. If you like that look, I've been able to have a pretty nice, like opaque look with two coats, but then usually I just like apply a little bit of a thicker, gotcha. thicker yeah. coat to get that really nice full coverage. But that makes a lot of sense to do the white. Plus it makes it a little easier. Yeah, at the end, I'll grab a white and I'll show you. So yes, you please show me what that looks like. Okay. So, I think script. someone asked about... Um, oh, yeah. Let me see. A question? Yes, I will pull it up now. When the polish demagnetizes, do you always have to add a new coat or can you use a magnet to get the effects back? You can use the magnet to get the effect back. And I can show you guys after what that looks like. Although, um, if I'm honest, it is probably easier to just repaint the top, you know, especially if it's not cured, there's no harm in that. And it's not going to make anything like thicker or more difficult because again, it's uncured. It's not like regular polish where you'd be applying like a whole thick, another layer coat. Um, but I'll show you guys that after of how you can like fix it. 
So now we're just gonna go ahead and take your magnet and then you're gonna hold it straight and center like this. You're gonna make sure it's turned to the side and then where you want the line to be. So for example, I want the line to be in the center of the nail. So then I'm gonna hold the magnet so that way it goes right to the center. Or if you make a mistake like me, I'm gonna have to show you exactly how to fix it now. <laughs> I thought I was going to show you line and I just went ahead and demagnetized the whole thing. So that's a common problem for me. So I totally get it. <laughs> so let me try this again. Um, okay. So first, now that it's demagnetized, let me show Courtney exactly how to fix it. So using the right side of your magnet, you're going to want to come and kind of play around with it. Hold on, give me one sec. Okay, there we go. So you're gonna have to like play with it to kind of pull it back. So if you see what I'm doing, I'm holding my magnet, but I'm making sure that it's the good side of my magnet. And you kind of drag it from one side to the other because what we're doing is we're trying to pull the magnetic pigments and like wrap it around the whole nail again. So that way we can see that pretty shine. And you can see here, especially when I move it, that I got my left side to be magnetized. However, my right side is not. So if I want to go ahead and re-magnetize everything, I'm gonna just have to kind of move the nail slowly and pull the magnet down to kind of bring that back. And then you're just gonna kind of play around with it and go all around the nail to do that. So you can see I'm bringing some of that back. I'm trying to create a circular oval look so I have to do the top, the bottom, and the side walls. And there we go. I brought the magnetization effect back. And now you can see it in comparison to my, so let me show you, in comparison to the side that I demagnetize, this is what it looks like when you demagnetize, it's completely clear. And now I was able to bring back the magnetization and make it nice and sparkly again. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and do my line effect again one more time. So I'm just gonna use it this way because it's a little easier for me. And I'm gonna There we go. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to try that too. Did I pay the second coat? I don't even think I did. <laughs> nothing was moving. And I was like, why is nothing moving? Oh yeah. I didn't pay the second coat. So for you, you might have an easier time with your large magnet um, because the plastic in here kind of, um, I it doesn't like weaken the magnet, but it softens it a little bit. So mm -hmm. if you're trying to create like a strong line, it might work a little better with um, when the magnet is not in a casing of some sort. So for creating a line, you're going to want to take your magnet and start from what, the right side and okay. slowly kind of go in like this. Yep. And then once you kind of get all the pigments up on one side, then you're going to flip the nail and do the other side and get it to focus it in the center. I feel like it's a little sheer and probably hard for people to see. So I'm going to paint it again, but I actually okay. prepared a white swatch. <laughs> oh, yay. Good. Show, show them you. what that looks like. Yeah, what I was talking about. 
I haven't, I've tried, um, I've tried this color with the white swatch. It looks super good. I haven't tried this new light angel color yet, but let's see how it comes out. So yeah, automatically you can see like it's, it's a lot more visible. I got my line, so I'm going to go ahead and cure it before I keep messing it up and like making it worse. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's probably a thing where it's like you keep messing with it and then it's like, oh, I should stop messing with it because I had it perfect. But I was like, oh, let me try more. Overdoing it. I know. I know. It happens sometimes. Okay. So automatically, like I can see this so much better. I feel like the camera yes. It too. looks so pretty. That's a really clever trick. I've never even tried um, applying the white base underneath, but that's actually very smart. I have to give that a shot sometime. Came up with my own tips. <laughs> yes. Sharing tips with me now. Pretty soon it's going to be um, okay, Raina's no, teaching time. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Raina's yeah. teaching time instead of Raina's nail okay. art pursuit. Oh, goodness crazy thought it's crazy because before I started working at Syllabue I hadn't had my nails done since prom which is going to be wow. on yeah and it's going to be almost 10 years ago you're so young I'm jealous <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm not like well I'm like huh, let's see if you're 10 years 10 years ago you said it's almost 10 years ago yeah it'll be 10 years 10. next year Oh, I yeah, because yeah, I graduated in 2013. But let me tell oh. you, I got my first gray hair recently and it was super cute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it at all. Okay. I am about five years older than you, but still short as can be, unfortunately. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to try my line now. I yay. wish you see the little rainbows in this. It's so pretty. Okay. Let's do it with my large magnets. Let me see. Maybe if I pull the camera away a bit. It is what it is. Okay. So you said I'm going to come from one side. Yes. So when you're working with your magnet, you want to hold it on the same plane or uh, the same plane as the nail tip. So it shouldn't be down. It shouldn't be above. It should be the same plane as the nail tip. And it should be hit, held from the side. And you're slowly going to go in. You don't need to even turn it for this one, actually. It's just going to be more of like a, like you're pushing almost. Am I crazy? Or is this, did I? Is, is it I the wrong side? It? Try flipping the magnet to see. I think see it's the if wrong it's side. The... I think you're right. It's got to be. Also, wait, did you apply your second coat? That's what I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I, don't I don't think you did. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> okay, to me, it looks dry. Up. I'm not sure. I'll just add another one. Oh, so pretty. Okay. okay. We're good now. All right. And then try the other side of your magnet and do that trick. Oh, yeah, I think I see something happening. Okay, so once that happens, now pull it away. Now flip your tip. Yep. And then with that same side of the magnet, go ahead and push in just a little bit. Oh, there it is. I got it. I see Yay. It. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. And then she There's used my little line. Them. Lovely. Okay. So once you get your line, my line is like kind of a, a thick line. <laughs> we like it thick sometimes. So, um, yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and cure it. And then the very last look I'm going to show you is, hmm, let's see, which one do I want to do? I think I want to try 
Let me try it with this nail tip. Remember the nail tip that we made the S shape? Yes, I have that here. Okay, so this is advanced level. Okay. <laughs> so you're gonna go ahead and take your gel and you know the, the two corners, the diagonal corners that we have here that don't have the magnetized effect? This, is this one then. <laughs> okay, now I have it, yes. Okay. This corner. So the sides that do not have the magnetized effect on it, you're going to go ahead and just paint like a little swoop. And this should kind of match the same, um, same like shape and swoop of that wave that we created, that S-shaped wave. So you can see here that like when I'm applying it, I'm following that same S-shaped swoop. I'm not applying it to the whole nail. It's literally just part of that corner that had the demagnetized gotcha. effect. And then I'm gonna turn the tip around and do the same thing and follow that swoop just like that. Once you get your swoop on both sides, you're gonna take your circular mag magnet and then we're gonna start at the bottom corner And we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and magnetize that bottom corner. Got it. Then you're gonna flip it around and do the tip as well. I feel like I accidentally demagnetized it, <laughs> but I'll just paint okay. it on again. Yep, just go ahead and paint it on again. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and cure mine before I accidentally mess it up again. <laughs> okay, let's see. There we go. Yes, uh, I see it. So go a little closer with your magnet. Go further up. Yep, move it. Yes, more, more, more. You can see it pushing to the, you see the magnetization being pushed oh, to yeah. the left. And that's what we want. Yes, you got it. Perfect. Right there. All right, done. Going. Before I mess it up. So now when you look at my nail tip, you can see here that there's like a swoop. There's like three swoops. <laughs> so here, let me point it out a little easier. You see one in the center. You see one on this side. And you can kind of see here. Like if I turn it upside down, it's a little easier. You can see this one over here. There's like a little line. I love it. So there are many different ways you can use this. Um, people have used a detail brush and then they like apply it on the nail and then um they use like this to kind of paint designs with so another way i've seen this used is like someone created a teddy bear using the magnetization um they were able to create like different parts of the bear by layering each layer and then magnetizing it in a different direction so there are so many different ways that this tip can work. And that's pretty much it that I have for you guys today. We did a total of like what four looks, I want to say, seven looks. We did a lot. <laughs> we did quite a bit. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Devin. This was 
super helpful because I have never been able to get this to work until today. And now I've done like multiple looks with it and I'm honestly impressed with myself. So yay. I'm so thank happy. You what so was your much. favorite look by the way, out of all of these? That's the last one have- we just did. Yeah. I think the last one we did with the different waves on it, I think the I double swoops. That. Yeah. yeah it looks so good. Well, thank you so much for having me again, Reina. It's always a pleasure. And I always have such a great time when we do our little lives. Me too. Well, I hope to see you soon. And to everyone else watching, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Reina's Nail Art Pursuit. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.